Hello and welcome to my science tutorials. In today's video, we want to look at the general characteristics of insects. Alright, so let's have an overview of what we are going to learn in today's video. So first of all, we'll be talking about the introduction and classification of insects. Then we proceed to look at the part of insects and their various functions. Then we look at the nutrition in insects movement and irritability in insects and we proceed to look at respiration and reproduction in insects and finally we talk about the economic importance of insects so let's begin by looking at the introduction of insects so insects are anthropods and possesses a body covered with cuticle made of nitrogenous polysaccharide that we call chitin or chitin secreted by the epidermis now, this cuticle provides a tough and flexible exoskeleton that provides protection for the insects. The exterior of the cuticle is covered with a thin layer of wax that prevents water loss in insects. Now, the body of insects is divided into three main parts. We have the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. Now, let's look at the classification of insects. Let's look at the kingdom, the phylum, and then the class under which insects all insects fall under so when we talk about kingdom insects fall under the kingdom animalia out of the five kingdoms that we have insects fall under kingdom animalia now this kingdom contains animals that are multicellular eukaryotic and non-photosynthetic they are adapted to live in any kind of environment either on the land in the ocean fresh water cold areas like the arctic hot areas like the desert and maybe even rainy areas like the tropical rainforest these organisms under kingdom animalia are suited to live in any kind of environment depend on their adaptation now insects fall under the phylum arthropoda now all the invertebrates that we have including animals like the insects the crustaceans like crab arachnids like spider and maripods they are characterized by chitinous exoskeleton. They have segmented body parts. You can see that their body is into segment and they have jointed appendages. That is their legs are in joint, they are in appendages or they are joined together. So all these organisms fall under the phylum that we are calling Arthropoda. Now insects fall under the class that we call Insecta. So the classification from kingdom to class of insects is kingdom animalia phylum arthropoda and class insecta so under the class insecta we are looking at insects that possesses a body covered with cuticle made of nitrogenous polysaccharide now the body of insects like i said earlier on is divided into three main parts we have the head the thorax and the abdomen now let's look at the main body division of insects so we have the head okay the head of the insect that has the the eye made of compound eyes. Uh, we have the antennae on the head. We have the chewing mouth part also on the head. So that is the first main body division of the insect. We have the head. Then from there, we have the thorax. The thorax is the layer or the body part that connects the head to the abdomen. That is in the middle. So we have the thorax. And on this thorax, we can have the wing of the insect. If it is a winged insect, or we can have the jointed appendages or the legs situated on the thorax of the insects. Now, the last body segment of the insects is the abdomen. Now, the abdomen is into uh, segments, various segments, and then this abdomen also possesses uh, the sex of the organism. By sex, it means whether it's a male or a female insect. Uh, it is on the last abdominal segment that you can see the male genitalia or the female genitalia to distinguish between the insects if you view them under a high-powered microscope. So let's look at the head of the insect. So the head of the insect bears a pair of compound eyes formed from simple eyes that we call omatidia. The head also bears a pair of segmented antennae as we can see in the picture a pair of maxillary palps and sometimes severally dos uh, dorsally situated simple eyes called procilia. The antennae are very sensitive to touch, smell and vibration. 
The pups have chemoreceptors which detect smell and taste. Now, when we talk about the mouth part of the insect, it is basically consists of an upper lip termed the labrum and a lower limb termed labium. And in between these two structures, we have the pair of mandibles and the maxillae. However, these mouth parts have been modified to switch the respective feeding modes of different insects. So, not all insects have uh, their mouth part the same. Some are very different. So, we'll look at that. So, let's look at the mouth part of the various insects that we have. So, we have, for a typical example, a beetle. The mouth part of a beetle is like a strong pincer like mandible for grasping, crushing, and chewing uh, maybe food or object or items that it it can hold itself now the anibi or maybe an uh, insect like a uh, mosquito their mouth part is uh, elongated and projected into something that we call proboxes that is for piercing and then sucking so for an uh, anibi it is for sucking nectar for a mosquito it is for sucking blood of an animal or a human being now for an insect like ant you can see that the mouth part is into a jaw-like mandible for biting and chewing so you can see that even though all insects belong to the class insecta their head which is one of the main body division their mouth part is different it varies depending on the particular species of insect that you are talking about so we have some that have pincer-like mandibles for crushing a typical example is the beetle we have honeybee and maybe mosquito that is uh, their mouth part is into pro boxes for sucking nectar or uh, blood and then we have the ant which has a jaw like mandibles for crushing and for chewing now let's look at the thorax of an insect the thorax is subdivided into something we call the prothorax the mesothorax and the metathorax so it means the thorax of the insect is divided into three segments the prothorax which is the first segment the mesothorax which is the second segment and then the metathorax which is the third segment now each of these segments bears a pair of jointed appendages or legs on the ventral surface on the ventral surface means it means their stomach side so each segment has a pair of leg on the ventral or the stomach side of the insect now insects may be winged or wingless so as we can see the example of the the ant we have here it is a wingless ant but we have some ants which also has wings we have a lot of insects that have wings we have some that don't have wings now in winged insects the two pair of wings called the fore and then the hind wings are born on the meso and then the metathorax respectively it means that in insects that have wings we have their wings on the second segment and then the third segment of the thorax which is the mesothorax and the metathorax respectively now each leg is divided into smaller segments called the cosa and then the trochanta and three larger segments that we are calling the femur, tibia and tarsus. We'll be looking at this if we talk more into detail about the body part of insects. Now the last segment of the ant is what we call the abdomen. So the abdomen consists of 11 segments but in many insects only few are visible. Now, each abdominal segment is composed of tegum and sternum, which is joined by a cuticle. The tegum is the topmost part, and then the sternum is the downward part of the abdomen. Now, the last abdominal segment of both sexes possesses bristle like structures called sessile. The abdomen contains the digestive tract for digestion of food and spiracles for gaseous exchange and the reproductive organ of the insect so you find a reproductive organ of the insect on the last segment of the abdomen in insects all right now let's look at the body parts of an insect and their function so let's start with the first one so we are looking at the pair of antennae so all insects have a pair of antennae now the antennae are sensitive to touch smell and vibration that is their function so they are sensitive to touch smell and vibration now we have the mouth part as the second part the mouth part like we said it is either into mandibles or proboscis or pincer like or jaw and it varies depending on the insect but all the same the mouth part are for chewing biting grinding grasping 
onto object or sucking nectar depending on the insect so if it is an only bee it is for sucking nectar if it is for mosquito for sucking blood if it is for and it is for biting and chewing and maybe holding onto an object so it depends on the insect that you're talking about now then we have the head so the head bears the pair of antennae the chewing or the sucking mouth part as well as the compound eyes of the insect now let's look at the next one that we have so the next part of the insect is the compound eyes so they are used for vision and possesses a very large view angle so they are eyes which we call the compound eyes are for vision and then and then they have a wide range of view so even if you want to hit an insect from the back the insect can already see you because they have a wider range of view now let's move to the thoracic part so let's talk about the effects thorax that is the prothorax so the prothorax it bears one pair of jointed appendages or legs on its ventral surface the second uh, part of the thorax which we call the mesothorax bears a pair of jointed appendages or legs on the ventral surface and in winged insects the forewing is born on this segment now the metathorax the metathorax bears one pair of jointed appendages just like the mesothorax and then in wing it says the hind wing is born on this uh, segment so it means the forewing which is the first wing of the insect is born on the mesothorax and then the hind wing which is the last pair of wings and wind insect is born on the metathorax now we have the three pair of legs which are situated on the uh, thorax of the insect so we have the the the, the legs or the three pair of legs they help the insect in locomotion in search of food or escaping danger some insects also use them to firmly grasp onto objects so we have the legs for walking for locomotion for displacement and then for grasping onto an object now the last abdominal the last segment we want to look at is the abdomen so the abdomen contains the digestive tract for digestion of food the spiracles for gaseous exchange and then the reproductive organ in insects so these are the parts of insects and their various functions now let's proceed to look at nutrition in insects so insects have a relatively long digestive system that begins in the mouth and ends in the anus cockroach for instance is an omnivore that feeds on a wide variety of substances such as books clothing starchy substances sweets and other organic substances the digestive system starts from the mouth and then to the esophagus the crop the gizzards the main gut the hind gut the rectum and the anus the food is taken into the mouth and chewed by the mouth parts saliva produced from the salivary glands softens the food and lubricates the digestive tract for easy swallowing this makes swallowing easy like i said the esophagus is short and narrow the saliva contains enzyme that we call emless that convert starch to maltose food then moves into the crop after passing through the esophagus the food is broken down by the enzyme produced in the mid gut the food leaves the crop and enters the gizzard where there will be grinding of solid substances then from there the mid gut produces enzymes for digestion of food and also absorbs the digested foods the mid gut produces enzymes that convert maltose to glucose proteins to amino acids and fats to fatty acids and glycerol so we can see that in the mid gut over here this is where most complex carbohydrates proteins and sugars are broken down into their mono uh monohydrate form or monosaccharide form so and then absorbed into the body of the insect the digested food is then absorbed at the mid gut and then the digestive cacae and assimilated into the entire body of the insect the undigested food passes down to the hind gut and is stored temporarily in the rectum water is absorbed at the hind gut and then the rectum the feces passes out of the anus through a small opening in the tegum 
on the 10th segment of the insect. So this is how the intro, uh, how nutrition in insects really occurs. Now let's look at excretion in insects. So for excretion, we have the main excretive products of insects are carbon dioxide and nitrogenous wastes. Much of the carbon dioxide is removed through the cuticle and the rest through the tracheal system. The main nitrogenous waste is removed by the malpigian tubules. The malpigian tubules absorb new the malpigian tubules absorbs nitrogenous waste from the blood and converts it into uric acid, which is passed into the ileum to be eliminated alongside phases through the anus. The uric acid is excreted semi-solid, which is an adaptation for water conservation in insects. Now let's look at movement and irritability in insects. So for movement, insects can either move by walking, jumping, or flying. So we can see a typical example of a walking insect over here. A typical example of a walking insect over here. And then we can have an insect, uh, which is a grasshopper, jumping and flying over here in the second image, as we can see over here. Now for irritability, most insects have compound eyes for vision. They also have a pair of antennae which are sensitive to touch, smell, and vibration. So we have the insect having compound eye which gives them a wide range of vision uh, for viewing and escaping the enemy. They also have the antennae which is sensitive to touch, vibration, and smell. Now let's look at respiration in insects so the respiratory system is made up of the spiracles and then the tracheal system comprising of a series of small tubes called the trachea which branch into a form which branch to form a network of smaller tubules called the tracheals in the body tissue now the spiracles are small circular openings which usually occur in the meso and the metathorax and the first eight abdominal segments via which oxygen diffuses into the tissues. During gaseous exchange, air enters the tracheal system by means of the spiracle, aided by the contraction and relaxation of the abdomen of the insects. The oxygen then diffuses into the smaller tracheals and eventually reaches the cells of the insects. Reproduction in insects. So during reproduction, insects mate only once because the female contains a structure that we call the spermatica, which stores all the sperms it may need to fertilize all the eggs it may lay throughout its life. The fertilization of eggs is internal in insects. Now, the fertilized eggs hatch into an immature stages called the larvae or nymph, which develop into the adult. The transformation from the egg stage into the immature stage to the final stage is what we call metamorphosis. Now there are two types of metamorphosis. We have the complete metamorphosis and then the incomplete metamorphosis. Now let's look at the reproduction or metamorphosis in insects. So when we talk about metamorphosis, this is the life cycle consisting of a series of developmental transformation of forms which takes place between the larva and the adult forms of anthropos, amphibians, and many invertebrates. Like we said, metamorphosis is divided into two. We have the complete metamorphosis and then the incomplete metamorphosis. Now, in complete metamorphosis, it is the developmental transformation of the body tissues of certain organisms in which there are four main stages. We have the egg, the larva, the pupa, and the adult. So we can see that in complete metamorphosis we have three stage four stages sorry we have the egg so it starts from the egg stage it moves to the larva stage then to the pupa and then the adult now in incomplete metamorphosis it is the gradual developmental transformation of the body tissue of certain organisms in which there are three stages we have the egg the nymph and then the adult so in incomplete metamorphosis we have only three stages we have the egg then from the egg to an immature adult 
like uh, insect that we call the nymph and then to a fully grown and matured insect that we call the adults. Now, reproduction, growth, and ecdysis. Growth in insects are restricted to the immature stages. Adults never grow. Growth occurs by the process known as ecdysis or molting. So, ecdysis is the periodic shedding of the exoskeleton of anthropod to enable them to undertake growth. So, as we can see in the picture, we can see a grasshopper undergoing ecdysis, that is, it is shedding off its exoskeleton in order for it to grow. Economic importance of insects. So, one of the economic importance of insects is they contaminate and destroy it and destroy food and properties. So even though that is a negative impact, it is also considered economic importance. So economic importance here means both the merit and demerit of insects. They have their importance, they have their advantages and then the disadvantages. All together that becomes the economic importance. So the first one is they contaminate and destroy food and properties. They are agents of diseases by transmitting disease causing organisms. They serve as agent of seed dispersal, which is good in our favor. They serve as agent of pollination, which is also good for our crops and our plants to produce fruit for us to eat. They help in the decay of organic matter, which adds nutrient to the soil. Then again, this is also a plus for us because if they help in the decay of organic matter, it means that we have more nutrients in the soil or manure, and then our crops and our plants will grow much faster without lacking any nutrients. Now, their presence is a nuisance. Generally, insects, their presence is a nuisance. They cause nuisance to us humans a lot. And then they serve as a source of food for some people, uh, for some group of people. So we have the larvae, the nymph, or the adults can serve as food for some people. So some people eat insects, either the larva stage, the nymph stage, or the adults, some people eat them as food so which is a plus for them so thank you so much for watching this general characteristics of insects we'll be talking more about insects where we we'll look at each individual insect as much as we can we look at butterfly we look at ants we look at any bee we look at them to talk about their difference and distinctions from each other so thank you once again for watching and i will see you in the next video bye bye